Welcome everybody to I the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. So today's Pick a Card reading is all about the rapidly changing and emerging world we have now with technology, artificial intelligence, all of those sort of things where I think we're heading into an unprecedented time of change and wonder, uh, opportunity and risk. And, and there's a very strong sort of connection around the spiritual with this and whether this is going to be a conduit to greater spiritual consciousness and knowing or whether it's in fact going to be a barrier, an impediment or a delusion put in the place of it. And, you know, it, I even know from people that, you know, I read for and, and who come to this channel that there's probably a diversity of views around that. But what I feel is that there is both opportunity and risk. And it's an interesting thing to look into if you're a spiritual person and you're wanting to look at how your own personal magic and your own personal approach can go towards the highest good. So that's what this is about. And it was inspired because I just got a new tarot deck from the creator who's done a few other tarot decks that I've used on this channel, one that's based on Medusa, um, there's one that I called the Green Tarot that looks very Arthurian and so forth. It's, I really like this creator's work, you know, the details of this deck with Steampunk Tarot is, is in the description box below if you want to check out his work. I just feel very connected to, to what he does and it's interesting because I've been looking for a Steampunk themed tarot for a long time and I just couldn't find one that I felt drawn to until he launched his. So you see three cards from that there to help with the choice it's going to be the tarot that we use and the reason that the steampunk idea is is the inspiration is that steampunk itself as a sort of literary and artistic concept of course is of a world that didn't ever happen but it, it's a really interesting kind of amalgam of rapid change again around industrial sort of change around the time. I think it's around Victorian or Edwardian in England. I think it's Victorian. I'm not sure. I'm not very good at history. But all the change that was happening around then and the sort of sense of the mystical and the magical. And I think we, we are on a precipice of a even bigger leap in that direction that, as I say, could either work out very well or be very challenging. So <coughs> I think the best thing that we can do is try and work out how we bring our own personal magic to that. So that's what I felt like I wanted to do as a theme the first time that I used this deck uh, on the channel. So that's the idea. So what, what we'll be looking at is... A couple of areas for your, that, of your own personal magic that could arise as all this change is occurring and what areas in your life that could impact. We'll have a look at what you could do personally towards that to build that and also how the external world and some of the, the issues that could be associated with AI and things like that are, are going to interplay with that. And what are some of the wildcard energies and, and signs that you could use to know that your, your power is developing and how to use it and it's going in the direction you want. I will, near the end, have a couple of questions, yes, no questions. So I'm using a particular deck that is for yes, no. So that I'll explain it a bit more as I, uh, I'm in the reading, but it's basically going to be, if we're looking at a couple of areas where magic is rising, I'll ask you to think about a question you might have about that, whether it's, you know, should I go and study this or should I join this group or should I start a YouTube channel about it, whatever it might be, that's up to you what it is. And we'll just sort of see a yes, no on each of those things before we close out. So that's what we're going to be looking at. I hope that's of interest. Just going to put down the numbers for those who like that. So what I did in terms of the choice is that I shuffled and I asked Spirit that the first three major arcana be the choice. And this is going to be a theme around what, I think more around the nature of the issues that you might deal with through this change rather than anything about the actual ability itself because there's other cards to look into that. So for part number one, we have the devil. Now, I don't think that necessarily means anything evil around this, but the devil is about power. It's about where we are caught up and bound up in something in, in, in our own obsession or interest or in the obsession interests or the structures and the powers of the world. So I do think for pile number one, there's going to be a theme about using this in relation to those sort of issues, but we'll get far more nuance with the other cards and with tarot to see a little bit more about that. For pile number two, the moon came up. The moon to me is very much the spiritual, the psychic, the numinous, very 12th house sort of energies very much like bringing things to the surface that might have been hidden in some way, the connection to the liminal. So I think there's those sorts of themes that are going to be part of it. And for pile number three, we have the star, which is finding, you know, your your North Star. It's your kind of grail quest. It's 
it's the thing that gives optimism and hope. So there's almost there's almost a, a procession here. Some of you may want to go to all the readings or to more than one because it's almost as though this is this is going to encapsulate some of the immediate sort of power issues that are associated with this. This is going to bring things to the surface and this is getting the navigation. So it's just interesting that's the way the cards came out. Not meaning to influence you particularly. You go with whatever works for you and if you normally just go for a particular number pile, do that go to more than one if you want but that that will be will i'll be using these cards and then shuffling them back into the deck for each reading to to be a theme so that may help you choose when you know what reading or readings you want to go to the timestamps as always are in the description box below and i'll see you there welcome pile one to your reading so we do have the devil card here as i say and i'll talk a little bit more about that now that i've seen the two areas where your magic is going to arise as a result of all the change that's going on and I think actually the devil is, is quite an appropriate card because as I say, you know, the devil within the tarot is not necessarily evil, but it does, it does connote issues around where we're bound up, where we get taken over by something, where power is involved. And there's very much a sense here that your role in the new world in what, at whatever level it operates and how you deal with it is on a very spiritual level and it's about being able to look at the shadow and understand it and also the light like to be able to almost see both sides of the story and to be able to set the appropriate boundaries and rules to to ma not make this a karmic mess quite frankly but in fact in fact to turn it into a blessing and it's kind of by not blinking it's kind of a sense of looking at it and being prepared to look at it and see that there are both advantages and disadvantages so just as I said in the beginning that, you know, people seem to be quite polarised on this issue, like whether or not AI is going to be something awful, for instance, or whether it's going to be something that is is a universal good, uh, there, there just seems to be the two sides to it. But I think it's probably got the opportunity for both as anything that is that powerful. And, and I don't think we understand what the consciousness is either. I think your role will be to be able to look it in its face. That's what I feel with this devil card here. It's like a very grim, determined sort of look. And, you know, there's a lot about time, you know, the clocks and everything up on the, the hat of the devil. And then we have the south node. So one aspect of power that you are going to develop as a result of this is the capacity to set the right boundaries and to know what is best to let go of. So there is a side here, I think, where it's, you won't be necessarily resistant to the change on the sense of we must always uh, stay where we are. We can't go to this. This is dangerous because that is that is getting caught up in things of the past rather than moving forward. But it's very interesting that the boundaries card here is the Lady of Avalon, because if you think about it, she gave the, the sword to Arthur. So the whole concept of what could be, and if you look at the, the Arthurian legends, the, the sort of sense of trying to have more universal harmony, better understanding, a more sustainable world, all of those sorts of things, uh, collaboration, camaraderie, honour, all of those things were there. But within within the power of that force and within the power of that mythology was also the seeds of its destruction, which were more about power when it was used for personal advantage or magic, certainly, in terms of whether or not something could be brought to that pure point. And in not seeing that or in using power without thinking of the consequences, in a way, that's, that's how the Arthurian legend became a tragedy. So I feel that there is something here for you. One part of your power is understanding the consequences of things. So you can see both the opportunities, but also where the boundaries are necessary because you're prepared to understand the world that you're dealing with. You're not a spiritual person who goes, I'm only going to be high vibrational. I'm not even going to, you know, like think about or connect with anything that upsets me or whatever, you know, I'm just high vibe, that's all fine. You're not that sort of person. That's not how you are going to take a role on here. You are going to look it in the face, like look it in the face, just like this devil is kind of looking out at us because you understand, you understand. There's a kind of prophetic feeling about this, actually. I think there's almost a sense of prophecy about you because understanding the past is just as important with prophecy as having any sense of the future. It's There are patterns, and I think it's like you can see those patterns. 
So one thing that's going to rise in you is certainly that sense of understanding the consequences of things and how to how to put some almost regulation around it in, in a way. Whether, as I say, whether it's you work directly in something like this or whether it's how you interact with it yourself and around your family and friends, you are able to look something in its face. And as a result, you can shine light. And this is light and dark light. So this is understanding both sides. It's understanding the kind of the duality that is associated with it. And that brings a grand trine of blessings. So it's it's almost as though you're a messenger, I think. I think that you, you move from understanding the consequences and being able to work out how to balance the dark and light within this. Then it's how you do the message to others so that this can be seen as a blessing and so that there is always the light shining on it. So as I said at the beginning with the three cards, it was almost like there was a procession. I, I'm wondering even with this, is if we're going to see the various things where each collective, each depending upon which pile you go to, is taking that procession from starting with understanding you know, what could be a problem with it or what could be a challenge and then bringing the balance in, bringing things to light like with the moon and then with the star being able to move forward. But certainly for you, I feel it's like a sense an understanding of the weave of history and what the issues are, like almost a regulatory thing and then a messenger thing. So I think that you're moving into a influence. You're, you're heading into some form of influence because there is a gravitas to what you have to say. So that's very interesting. So let's get the tarot and let's get a little bit more idea. So <clears throat> I'm going to ask firstly for some more information about what power is rising in you what magic is rising in you for each of these steps, then I'm going to ask, how does the external world impact this? Because whatever power we have in this, you know, we're dealing with very major external factors and we're dealing with a lot of other people who, as I say, on a very divided topic, have different views around it. So firstly, for this, this power in you to, to be like the Lady of Avalon, to understand the implications, the karmic and spiritual implications of the choices that are being made now and the boundaries, like to put some form of regulation into it, a little bit more information about how that power is arising in you, Pile 1. The Emperor, the Hanged Man reversed, the Queen of Wands, the Five of Cups, the Four of Cups. Okay. So there is a lot about power with you. I think, you know, if you were drawn to this, this devil card, it makes sense that the emperor would come up because that is, you know, there are certain cards that are like of the powers of the world. Devil is one of them. Emperor is another. Empress is in a different way, but the emperor tends to be there. This feels very corporate. It feels very, you know, industrial. It feels very, you know, of, of the sort of money markets, all of that kind of thing. So I think many of you, this is about creating a leadership role through the way that you can look at things differently with the hanged man. You can see this from a different perspective, but it's a very practical one. You're very practical. You have quite a lot of charisma too, to be able to, to do this. So you've got gravitas and charisma, which kind of makes sense too. This feels like gravitas, this feels like charisma, just even in the coloring. So it's saying you have both. The gravitas comes from the way that you can look at things on a material practical level and see things that other people don't see. The charisma is how you can then work out a message that's going to work. And it, it looks like a problem solving message. Now we'll get to we'll get to what this is, but I think there's even a hint here with the five of cups and the four of cups. This is this has got something to do with understanding what hasn't worked before, particularly emotionally, what messages haven't worked before, and where there are risks. Risks around the kind of quality of life, I think. I think that what you'll be doing is you'll be looking at where are there a potential quality of life, quality of emotional connections. That's what you're going to focus on. Because I think you're going to say, there's a lot materially that will work with this, but this is the thing that you have to look at, which then I think will lead to the second, the second sort of power. So one power is to understand that, in a sense, what we're looking at here is that the the positives around this is, is a completely new vista of opportunity. The negatives are, is the heart loss somewhere in it? And it's like seeing those sort of things and understanding, you're know, feeling the confidence to be able to balance those. So let's have a look at then what happens when you move into this messenger. Like having worked that through, when you move into this sort of messenger role, how does the power arise in you? Two of cups reversed, nine of wands, King of Pentacles, Six of Cups reversed, the 
Tower of Us. Okay. <clears throat> Part of it is that your message will be that there is no putting the genie back in the bottle. With the Tower reversed here and the Six of Cups reversed. Part of your message is, is there's no good sort of like wanting to just go back to something nostalgic when none of this worked. That's not going to work. That, that it's more that we have to incrementally work out how to how to manage this change. And we don't have to boil the ocean. We don't have to do it all at once. Stability. You're very much about stability and how to create stability. And I do think that many of you, this is going to play out around career or something like that. Like it's a power that's material. You are a manifester, um, but it's like within systems and within organisations and so forth. And it's I think you're moving into a kind of leadership role in one form or another because of this. That's part of what the opportunity is here. But but part of your message is we have to move forward. We can't we can't you know we can't try to stop the change. The change is coming. It's more how we manage the timing of it. And again, it's like you see here with the Two of Cups reversed and the Nine of Wands that the energy needs to be put into working out the emotional outcome, outcome of this. So I think, you know, this sort of looks like if you were someone who, who was becoming extremely good at understanding the implications of this, say, in a corporate environment, and you could see, you know, there's a speed to productivity that could come with it, there's all sorts of opportunities and so forth, you could really lead out on the change, you also recognise that maybe one of the first casualties to this, if it isn't factored into it, is the emotional and cultural connection of the people working together. Like, and if you think about AI and you think about some of the things they're talking about, you know, being in these various things like the metaverse or whatever, we could become incredibly isolated. So I think you understand that. So it's like you're trying to work out the material way that, that can keep the connection even when there's a very strong profit motive. So this is very much around something, I think, if you've come to the right reading, it is for you very much around how this is used on a material level, but how you can salvage the, the sort of cultural connection, that sort of very human side of what we like to do, you know, in, in something like our workplace or our sort of causes and so forth, so that we, we embrace what this, the opportunity is, but we don't lose ourselves in the process. So let's see how the external world, I'm just going to pull four cards for how the external world is going to impact on what you're trying to do here. If you're trying to understand the light and the dark of this and not slow it down, but, but give it some boundaries and some understanding and some balance so that it becomes a blessing rather than a curse, how does the external world respond to you? High Priestess, very good spiritually. Nine of Pentacles. Knight of Swords reversed, the Hermit reversed. Okay, this is almost like two sides of the coin. Some are going to get it because they're going to understand the spiritual side of this. They're going to see you as someone who's understood a mystery or unlocked a mystery in a way that they haven't, and they see you as being independent. Like you're not, if you are advocating for this in some way, it's not that you're doing it for some profit motive where you know there's all these issues and you're, you're that you're not going to be seen as someone who is is somehow caught or captured by the environment, but you are seen as someone who's understood how things operate. So some are going to go, yeah, that's that's great, and they're going to 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 see you as a truly independent, wise counsel on all of this. You're also going to deal with people who are like, what is all this spiritual stuff like? You know, like there, there's, there are some very, very material people here who don't believe in that, who would probably even see things like what's happening with AI as proof that spirit doesn't exist, that it's all just, you know, noughts and, and, and ones or whatever, you know, in the computer sense. So there's going to be some conservative sort of push that tries to hold back some of what you do because it's going to be saying this is, this is not the important thing. The important thing is the profit side of things. So I think you're going to have a bit of both. But I think that, that most people, this is why you're going to be powerful, will see you as not captured by this side. In fact, the more that this side sort of pushes back and goes, you know, you're looking at things that don't matter, the more you're going to actually have power in the message that you, that you bring forward. So, okay. So you're a messenger of, of, not, of not halting progress, but equally not losing ourselves and our spiritual aspect in the process of... of that. So let's have a look at some wildcard energies for each stage as well and, and signs that you might have that things are coming together and your power is coming out. So firstly, a wildcard energy around you 
being able to be this lady of Avalon, being able to understand the consequences of things and, and communicate that. I am adaptable, quiet above the chaos, flexibility, equilibrium, mental stability. Yeah, you are, you're adaptable. This is your message. You're, you're about balancing it. You do actually see where there is, there is benefit in this. And you, you, I think, are saying that you set boundaries that are allowing for nuance. So, and this is because you're looking at the spiritual and emotional side as well. So, so you, you seem flexible. You seem to be, you, you don't seem to be trying to stop it just to stop it. Equally to others, you don't seem to be just pushing it just for a profit motive. There is, this is, this is you kind of being able to step above the chaos and see the consequences, as I say. It's very powerful energy that's coming up in you. Then in terms of the, the step to, to, bringing the message out and helping to kind of shine the light, shine the light towards the the blessings that are are possible with this i am reborn recovery rejuvenation return from the past resurrection so this is understanding the past but resurrection it's really interesting too because it's like a devil figure here but this is like a different way of looking at it like a different way of looking at power at its very best, I think you may be able to get a balance in this that that takes it away from some of the risks that we would normally associate with the devil, with a kind of like obsession and being bound up um, and, and making it more like a phoenix rising or something like that. But but it, it is interesting because you your energy was not to sort of like dwell on nostalgia. It was to say we need to change. But with the tower reversed, it was like step by step so that it wasn't overwhelming. So I feel like... This is, this is a, a sense that you can, can like move past the fears that people have and show a different way of, of kind of the, the powers of the world. I think there is, you do have that possibility. Let's have a look with the Radiant Soul Oracle, how that plays out on a soul level for you. So again, around this flexible but, but wise consequential thinking sort of energy we get... The transmuted, exit, release, heal, transform. Yeah, this is, you know that there is, as I say, no putting the genie back in the bottle. This, you are able to transmute. You are able to be reborn. This process, it's almost as though for you, looking at the past, considering the issues, planning it out and having some boundaries is the very energy that allows you to transmute, change, and then be reborn. It's like you might show how to do this for the people around you. And then when you are spreading that message, when, when the way of using your powers and, and the world that's emerging has, has started to really come into being and be seen, we have the realized, fusion, alignment, mastery, wholeness. Yeah. I think the people in this, there's something about this in the material world, I think. This is, this is where it is for you because we started with the devil. But it's a highly spiritual and highly emotional side to this where you're going to show people how to change without losing what is valuable to them. I think that's what this is saying overall. So let's just draw a card for each of these, again, for signs that you might see when, when these powers are rising in you. So the, the consequential thinking, prophetic, set the regulatory powers, that kind of energy arising in you. A sign would be time. Okay, so divine timing, Time in general, it's interesting, the clocks are there as well. It's just this feeling about time. I think you'll have a very good sense of the timing when it's time to actually start to change, when things are meant to come in. But you may sort of find you start to see those things like 11-11 or 12-12 on a clock. And then when the realisation has occurred and your message has actually been able to reach its intended audience or it's starting to, tree of life, yeah, the resurrection, the rebirth, the connection to the spiritual... I think it's when this side of things where people see the spiritual thing actually starts to, to get past the kind of more conservative or scientific side of things. It's where, where part of what you do reacquaints science and magic as opposed to keeping them separate, like being the grand alchemist or something like that. Okay, so given that, as I said, we were going to do a couple of questions. So... This is now when you're thinking about this and how you think it might work in your life and pause the video each time if you need to. 
I'm just going to ask you to think of a yes, no question. And it could be anything from, you know, do I need to study something for this? Is this person a good person to connect with around it? Should I leave a workplace and go somewhere else? Whatever it might be, whatever you think for you to, to get this sense of what needs to change and how to change and how to make it manageable and then how to actually bring it into being and communicate it. A question for each of these. So pause and then and then sort of like unpause once you've got the question. I'm just going to pull two cards and we're just going to see what they say, like whether it's a yes or a no and kind of a little bit about why. So for your first question, for this first power, magical power that's rising in you, and the answer is yes. It's a good investment, getting paid, saving up. So if this is anything around career, yes, absolutely. If this is more allegorical, if it's an investment in a broader sense, so as I say, if it was, you know, should I connect with this person, it would be a very strong yes. I find it very interesting too, the colouring fits with the sign. So there may be something about time. You might have been asking, you know, is this a good time to do something? And that would be very strongly yes because of the similar sort of colouring that we're seeing there. There's definitely something for you about time, you know, the past, the sort of the, the future blessings, all of that kind of thing. But whatever it is, whatever you're asking, the question, the answer is yes. And it's a positive reason. Even if yes to you doesn't feel like a positive outcome, it will be a positive outcome. Okay, so pause again if you need to, but please think about your second question. And the answer to your second question is yes, again, fulfilling your desires, being refreshed, being refreshed, moving so any kind of change, any kind of like stirring everything up, changing the way that you want to communicate, any of those sort of things, definitely there is that sense that the change that's bringing in, you know, and what you do and what you're choosing to do around that or whatever message you're thinking about is going to be towards what you would want it to be. And it's going to you know, be moving, you know, like get people to, to come with you. So very much yes, yes on your questions. So last but not least, we're going to look at a magic power you've always had. So these are ones that are coming up in you. And the, the, the magic power you've always had might connect to these. They might have been the first stepping stone or the foundation, or it might be something else. And it's just to close out with what personal other magic you have that will help you get the best outcome here for yourself and for others. And we have healing. Okay, you've always been a healer. You've always been able to heal within yourself and always been able to heal others. And that makes a lot of sense for this because, as I say, this feels to me like in one way or another, in a very material world, in a workplace, in a business, in, in you know, I guess in academia, in something that's material, something that has a structure around it, your capacity to understand what has happened before in history, so therefore what is likely to happen from this, and then bring a message towards what, what reconnects to the heart and to the spirit is a big part of how you're going to achieve this. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 1. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So you came to the reading with the moon. And as I said, I feel very much the moon to me is the liminal space. It's sort of the 12th house. It's step psychology. It's often bringing things to the surface or where things have been secret in some way. So I do feel that there is something about your magic that is growing as we head into this sort of uncharted territory that will be about bringing things to the surface and understanding the implications. And I think it's the implications of choice because I find it very interesting in this deck that there are these two buildings and the moon is sort of there in the center shining some light. It seems to be shining light a bit more on one than the other. So I, I do wonder whether for many of you part of the magic that's going to rise is to work out where the true light is. The other thing that's interesting, of course, is that the moon gets the light reflected from the sun. So within this sort of a picture, it would suggest the sun somewhere off to this side. So it may be about understanding where is the true light. And potentially also where is where is being in the sort of dark and the quiet just as valuable as being in the light so I there is something here I think about choice I think it's about a very spiritual connection to understand the choice the way it's playing out for you though which is interesting is in in two dichotomy choices again and it, and the first one when we have time for play, Woodland Queen, there's a sort of sense of nature and enjoyment. And it could, in fact, even be like the choice of, of the natural world and, and what is fun within that compared to 
the material world with second house owning, what kind of life do you want to create for yourself? So how do you get a balance towards enjoyment as well as as outcome? Because the second house is very much about, you know, what is the life that you're going to have? What are you going to own? What is your status? All of those things. It is very important around what your ethics are and what you believe in. Um, but there seems to be almost a kind of a, a choice here and how to bring that into balance. And so maybe one of your your powers in this is understanding how to balance off where is almost the play aspect that you could have, the explorative aspect that you could have, the different realms and worlds that could exist in in a kind of quasi-liminal space. I mean, it's a technological liminal space uh, compared to what you materially need. And the thing that's interesting about that is that the other power that's arising in you is understanding when you need others and when you can just be on your own. And so what I felt when I looked at these cards, because I always contemplate before I press record, is that the interesting thing, and we don't know exactly how it's going to play out, but the interesting thing around the the sort of like AI world that's coming through and all that sort of stuff is people are talking about things like Neuralink and all this sort of stuff and where you could like have this chip in your head and suddenly you could be in this kind of like manufactured world where arguably you could potentially sustain your wish for play and entertainment. You could potentially be productive in some way and be doing something that, that, that somehow creates a, a material outcome for you, all those things. But you could potentially do it without ever really connecting with another person. And, and that is potentially a problem because we are social creatures. But, but here, you've got the same dichotomy and the same balance because you've got the seventh house and partners. So I think that you are kind of looking at the material outcome of the changes in terms of how do we create a sustainable, natural life where we would feel that we could achieve what we wanted to, but that we also felt connected to nature. And how do we how do we use the opportunities for what is the self-directed energy and where there is a gift of solitude, you know, like where where you can warm your own heart from your own understanding of yourself and your own mindscape and all of those things compared to the connections with others. And I think it's this is the realm of the moon because it's bringing things to the surface. What it brings to the surface and what I think you may bring to the surface for other people as well as for yourself with this is understanding the implications of those choices. What's the balance? Because they really are a kind of a balance, each of them, it's just in different aspects. One is a balance of how much could you have leisure, play, exploration compared to what you need to do materially in the world, in this world where you know, so much could be done by technology. One of the things I remember years ago, years ago, probably 30 or more years ago, um, social scientists were starting to talk about the fact that with technology then, and we weren't even anywhere near this, but they were talking about how we would eventually head to a point where full-time work no longer made any sense. The whole economic structure of the world um, would be geared towards less, you know, sort of effort that, you know, each individual had to put in. But then it's sort of like, well, how do you sustain an economy? What do you do in terms of the rest of the time? How do people use that productively? All of those sort of things. And I and I think that's only going to accelerate with this. And that's kind of the feeling I get with this of there's something in you, a power in you of understanding the balance between that which is explorative and fun and natural and that which is materially going to be sustainable. And then over here, the dichotomy is between what is within the inner self. And that's very much the realm of the moon, you know, like and the realm of the 12th house and, and who you are at your core. But how do you how do you keep the connection with others? And and when is it right? When do you need the connection with others? And when do you need to be just following your own path? So I think this is is raising some very interesting things for you about what makes a sustainable life, a sustainable spiritually accurate, spiritually enriching life. Um, but not not making a a binary choice that then says it's only one and not the other. I feel like this is about balance. It's about balance. So let's see what the tarot has to say. So we're firstly going to look at this one. This is like a power rising in you to find a balance between all the explorative and, and fun aspects of all of this compared to what is materially sustainable. So what, what are we looking at in terms of that for you, in terms of the magic that, that you will bring to, to this for yourself and for others? Knight of Pentacles, the Sun, Four of Pentacles reversed, 
Three of Swords. Nine of Swords. This is interesting. In, in pile one, without going into too much detail, I almost felt by the time I got to the end of this, it was starting to kick into the other side, and the same thing's happening here. So I think we're seeing a progression in these. They're not like two things that are happening at the same time. There's almost a progression. <clears throat> Nine of Pentacles here is very much like the second house. There, I, there is definitely... What is what is, could you materially commit to and what makes material sense and what do you feel is on your life path? I feel like the sun there is like the, the glowing object that the, the, the woodland um, queen there is holding. So I do think this is saying that part of working this out is to understand what your cause is. What, 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 what would you be prepared to commit to? So because it would be very, very easy to disappear just into the, the explorative thing and so forth and not then have a cause. But I think you need a cause. And I think this is part of what's going to help you make the decisions about this. I also think it might be tilting towards this is the most important of the two decisions. And the reason I say that is that, as I say, I think the moon takes its light from the sun and the sun is is in this line. It's, it's about this. And she is holding the glowing energy. So there is something about how this is connected to the material world and the, the life that you're trying to create that is important and, and being able to understand the implications of that. And you know with the Four of Pentacles reverse that change is coming. Change is inevitable. The issue is not to have too painful or worrying a change. So I think one of the things that you're going to be looking at with this is that you're less likely to just think, okay, I'm just going to disappear into lots of computer games and so forth, and that'll all work out for itself. You kind of know that you need this underpinning. You need, you need the cause, you need the direction, and you need material things, and that's shifting. So I think that a lot of where you will focus your attention is on bringing that to light because you can, you can actually see that there is a lot of separation, pain, worry that could occur particularly if one is living just in one's mind because again if we move to this sort of like the solitude sort of area here if you're kind of existing in a ai world for instance and it's all in your mind because that's effectively what it is if you think about in tarot the, the swords the mind cards are the harshest cards and it's because we can blow everything up so much in that compared to what is materially so there's a, a sense here i think of one of your your powers is to understand the importance of the material, that you cannot detach completely from that. That that, in fact, would be to be hiding the truth as opposed to illuminating the truth. So then if you're, if you're part of this is to understand the material impact so that one isn't lost in the, the, the kind of labyrinthian areas of the mind, then what happens here when you're kind of like working out when when it's okay in a sense to be sort of on your own and, and in that world and exploring and when you need to connect with others how how is your power about making that choice manifest itself i'll tell you the hermit the page of wands reversed the ace of cups reversed six of swords eight of pentacles okay <clears throat> So I think the fundamental issue is this first one, as I've said, for all the reasons that I've said before. And I think you know that. And I think it's through working that out that you actually work out the balance of when you should be exploring for yourself and when you need to connect with others. Because the answer is here. The When we've got the kind of risk of, of being in this sort of like overblown mental realm that is, is just full of anxiety and disconnection and, and pain and detachment... By getting it right about when you connect with others and when you when you explore, there is that sense of understanding that is a skill. With the Eight of Pentacles, you can develop that skill and you can start to know and you can have, again, going back to the material, understanding the outcome of how you use a skill. And that allows you to, to understand the shift emotionally and to not be so concerned when you're detached if you're using your skill, but also knowing when you do need to connect. What this is showing is that the, there is there is a tendency, you may have a bit of a tendency towards the, the kind of being on your own would be attractive on some level. And it may be for some of you because relationships have not taken off the way that you wanted. But there is a side of you that understands that there's still a skill that has to be done to navigate this because there is a risk of only exacerbating that sort of sense of solitude as opposed to sort of positive sort of decisions around it. So I think that for, for many of you, 
you may be naturally the sort of person who, who you know, you maybe you kind of a introvert rather than extrovert, that kind of thing. You, I think you have a you have a natural tendency that will fit well in this world, and you will be able to explore and play and have all those things. But you do know, you do understand that that there is also a material world that exists. Like there's there's whatever you experience on that level, but there's a material world as well, and that the connection with others is the important thing and that you can use the skills that you have to get that balance right. So given that, let's have a look, just four cards for how the external world operates with you because you are aware the external world is going to keep existing. It's got to be something that creates productivity that means that there's food in your belly, all that kind of thing. You can't just sort of disappear off into the, the metaverse and that's it. And, and you do have the skills and the capacity to do it and you are more able in a sense to to do this and many other people and that power is going to become more apparent but you do know there's a material world so how is the material world impacting on how you use this sort of power of balance and choice ace of pentacles reversed the world reversed the eight of wands reversed the four of swords reversed okay all right it's going to impact tell you not to go to your natural being on your own as much you are better equipped for this than most that's what i'm going to say you definitely are better equipped you're comfortable in liminal spaces you're comfortable in your own mind all of that kind of thing as i say it could be a bit of a loner could be a bit of a introvert any of those sort of things but you are practical you do know and and the material world is saying you can't ignore me the Ace of Pentacles reversed, it's like there has to be a plan around things materially. The world reversed is it's going to exist whether or not you you want to be in it. The Eight of Wands is saying that, that progress will be slowed down in actual fact because the material world also has to be dealt with. And Four of Swords, you can't sit over there on your own all the time. But I think that, that as I say, because I think that your power will be to be able to navigate this world and make those choices and balance that better than others. I think that you will be able to sort of show that as a kind of a principle to other people, but but the world exists anyway. And and, it, and I think this is actually a positive thing. It's, there, there really isn't going to be a capacity to completely disappear into this world because we are still going to be in a body. We still have to feed ourselves and all those sort of things. So the material world is going to keep pushing and nudging and saying, remember me. And I think you can, because you can sort of deal in this world a bit more than others and you, you can enjoy it, but you do understand the importance of these things, I think you're going to help yourself and others in, in making sure that the actual world is not forgotten. I think that's what's going on here. So let's have a look at some sort of wildcard energy and so forth around each of these sort of abilities. So the ability to to explore but be practical the ability to to take your own capacity to be on your own and explore thoroughly but also to know when you need to reach out to others just some other energy around that so firstly a wild card around each of these so the power of practical exploration in this world drag queen drag queen vibes break the rules counter current audacity redemption so there is a side of you that can really play this is part of the play energy with this like you are a little bit of an iconoclast you are very individual all of those sort of things so so you're going to be able to push the envelope with this um and part of the thing that makes that successful for someone is that they actually understand how to be in the world but also be different in the world so i think i think that's an energy for you there you will be there is something very very individual about you and as i say that makes you well suited to this to some degree but you also know that you need to present into the world and that, that this is a time where you've got to like work out what rules are going to apply going forward. What ones can you break and what ones are going to come back and haunt everybody if they try to ignore them. And then over here and trying to work out when to be you know, on your own and, and in your own world and when to connect with others. I am independent, freedom, liberation, individuality, free spirit. You are very focused. You are very much your own person. Like these are very strongly saying you're very much your own person. So you, you're probably, this is showing that you have a particular magic and a particular power around that really high degree of individuality that you have that is exactly why you're the person that's kind of going to, to be almost a test case around this sort of thing. 
because the material world is still there and you know it and you do know you need to connect with others even if, if maybe that's been tricky for various reasons because you are very different, very independent. Um, but I think that this world is going to provide opportunities and I think for you, you're going to find your magic is in getting the balance right and not kind of going and hiding away on your own. So let's sort of see with the Radiant Soul deck what kind of spiritual aspects are coming with these powers. So with Drag Queen vibes and with your capacity to explore, break the rules a bit, really test out the, the parameters of this world, but, but still know there's practical outcomes. We get the mechanical method, system, organized technology. Well, yeah, you're very well, you, technology, you're all over it. <laughs> like that, you're very, you feel very natural in this space and you can understand the system. This is why you could do it. This is why you could do it. I think most of you are kind of geeks, you know. Geeks are going to rule this world, so well done you. I think there's that kind of energy. You really are. You're an individual. You're very strong. You're ca capable of being on your own and, and, and navigating this world on your own. But you do get that there is still a system and there is still a world. So that's very powerful. Then when you're trying to work out, when do you go just on your own in your independence and when do you actually have to connect with others? We get... The subconscious, dream, messages, depths, the absurd air, yeah, and that's where we get the moon. One of the things that I feel, it's just a theory that I have about AI, is it's not going to turn out to be what people expect. I think it's going to draw in, it's going to be a portal into, this is just a theory that I have, um, into, into you know, the liminal space much more and, you know, the old gods and all that kind of stuff. I just sort of have a sense that, it isn't quite what we think it is. And it looks almost like you're going to be someone who who will explore that and see that sooner than others because the subconscious and the moon, this capacity to go within, it's almost as though you may be a pioneer magically within that realm where you find a way, while theoretically we're all in our own little worlds, to actually connect to others through the kind of collective unconscious or something like that. It's just interesting. It's like you, because you're going to be so well suited to doing this, and it's a very strong spiritual side of things. But you do, you do do feel the pull of the world. You do know the world is there. You might find a way to to connect it. Like that might be the magic that we're seeing here. Because you're you're comfortable in that, you know, and there's anxiety around it for most people, but you're kind of like you you get that, but you can stay dedicated to to doing this and allowing the change to occur. And you know, you probably know very well when you feel anxious, so you know how to like mitigate that. I think this is saying there's something where you're going to find a way to connect in that realm that maybe people don't expect, which is interesting. So let's just look at some signs that might show up with each of these powers arising. So the first one being able to to break the rules, you know, to, to work within the system, but to work within it in a different way to understand the consequences of that. We get mirror. Okay, yeah, and that makes sense. Like, it's this is the thing. I think you are... Yeah, you know, the people who come to this, if you've come to the right reading, you are very well attuned with what this new world is. Like, it suits you in many ways. And you understand something in the issues that you're dealing with here are issues that you are dealing with personally. So in understanding the system and how to get that right, kind of how to, to be able to fully be open to all that you could be and all it could be, but at the same time have some solidity to it, like to create something sustainable, is, is like a mirror of a journey that you're doing more generally. And even over here, is sort of like the mirror of like where you would want to be in your own world, your own mind, your own subconscious, but also the connection to others through something that's much more liminal. So let's see how over here, this independence, but a connection in a different way comes out. Bag of marbles. Now, that's interesting because that kind of suggests fun, and you've got fun over here. Diversity, difference, all the different colours. I just think that you, there's something about this group. I think that you're going to, you're particularly able to, to be in this space in a way that a lot of other people will find it hard to adjust. And I think as a result of that, you're going to find the connections that people didn't even think would happen and therefore provide all these sort of opportunities for connection, for difference and connection. And like you might literally see marbles or, you know, they might turn up in the kind of the, the, the your dreams or in your subconscious or you could, you could just see lots of different colours 
or you could have that sense of play over here, whatever it is, I think that's going to be telling you that you're starting to make the connections, but in this very different world, which is really interesting. Now, as I said, I'm going to have like a <clears throat> couple of questions. So pause the video um, until you've got each question, if you haven't already worked it out, but it's really a question around each of these things. If, the, if this is one power about being able to truly explore this new world, but still be practical, and like to be an iconoclast and get all the things out of it, but also understand the system enough and understand yourself within the system, then I'm asking you to think about a question of yes, no. And it could be, you know, should I go and study this thing? Or I can think of a person who would be really good to connect with with this. Should I do this? Or this might be a career change I want to make. Whatever it might be, just something that has to do with that power rising in you. Then pause the video until you've got that question. But when you do, I'm just going to draw one card that has a yes, no, and it'll say yes or no and why. So for this first question for you, Pole 2, around your exploration and your understanding the system and, and how to break the system but also sustain the system, whatever your question is, the answer is yes. Stokes your passion, heart's desire blooming. That's interesting might have come up in one of the others or it, it, it like kind of maybe it's come up in a reading that I did recently actually I think a private reading but this is there's something very very good about what you're thinking about doing here like you could really really do something with what you're thinking and if yes had been an answer that you didn't want then it may be that it, it actually stokes your passion to make the decisions you need to do to bring in what you do want but there's something about that answer which sort of gets your your desires going Okay, think about your second question. So the answer to the second question for pile two is, yes, your eyes are fully open, seeing what's possible. Whatever you're thinking about this, as I say, you're very well, you've got a really good handle on what this world is going to be like and you, will, you have particular skills, abilities, magic and so forth that will make it even better as you sort of like start to explore it. But yeah, whatever this is, so, you know, if you are, if you are thinking, oh, this is what I think is going to happen and I could do X, then the answer is yes, absolutely. So it's a couple of yeses. So to finish off, I'm just going to pull from another magic deck. And this is a magic power you've always had. It could be foundational in you stepping into these abilities, or it could be just something that is also there in your kit bag. But it's just to sort of finish off the energy around this for you. And we get mediumship. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. The moon, the subconscious. <clears throat> the connection. So yeah, because mediums can connect with spirit energy that has passed over. So it connects between different worlds. I just think we're going to find something with AI that, that provides a portal connection that we don't necessarily expect because we're just thinking of it as science. But I think you have that ability. You have the ability to connect in the liminal space, to connect with others. And so therefore you are likely to be a pioneer on how we connect in this new world rather than become isolated. And how we sustain this you know, and, and make it work for us so it can, can take us further and do something positive rather than something that kind of we get caught in the sort of nightmarish realm where, where nothing is sustainable. So I think you've got, this group has got some pretty important stuff to do because you are particularly suited to it and your personal magic is particularly suited to it. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So you came to the reading with the star, uh, and as I said, I, I feel like that ultimately, a big part of the magic that you're going to bring into this new world is, is a form of optimism. The interesting thing is that it's not empty optimism looking at this. This is optimism that is that is achieved. It's almost, it literally is a choice, and it is achieved. So it's not coming from naivety. The star here, as a star is quite quite late in the the fool's journey in the in the major arcana it isn't naive like the, the fool tends to be a bit naive the star is the more mature version of this where many things have been experienced in life and there's a lot of learning so that one has a truer compass or a truer sense of where to go and i think for you the the power and the magic that is rising in you is an understanding of your own self within this world and what you would want to do with that and then how you want to express it against, I think, some form of either you have a concern about what is sort of coming up with sort of AI and technology or about some sort of a cause. There's something in this. This is going to raise in you a very strong sense of self, very solar plexus sort of energy, um, maybe 
have you be seen like I think for many of you this may actually raise your profile in some very significant way uh, and and I think it's coming it's like it feels like a phoenix rising sort of energy so I, I feel like there's sort of something here where where you this will liberate you in some way to express and channel what wasn't working and move towards something that will work for you so I, I feel like for most of you this is a sense where you've maybe been frustrated by the existing world by the limitations of the existing world you may be sort of someone who's very very well suited to to the realm of ai and all of that kind of thing because there's, there's something here where you get to be seen it may be <coughs> that it's all around the social media side of it i don't know but the thing that's interesting about this as i say is that the, that you are you are bringing through an optimism and a sense of following your north star and all of that kind of thing i think for many of you where your north node is in your chart would say a lot about how this is going to manifest for you but when we look at the first of the powers this is making a choice the power to make a choice and it's, it's very as i say very yellow very solar plexus there's a sense here of like backing yourself with leo i will you know the sense of like i know who i am you know i there's a leadership sense here there's a dramatic sense here there is there is making a a very visible stand in some way i think that there is a power of you creating a sense of who you are in the world that's going to happen because of this there's something in the way that you will channel and use the magic and the technology and all of that kind of thing to be seen and it and it could be very creative and very dramatic um for for many of you with that combination but even if it isn't even if it isn't like you're sort of a creative artist or something like that this is this is giving you choices you didn't have before and you are deciding you're going to take those choices because that then channels on to how you are going to communicate with others as a way of dealing with, I think, the frustrations of things that haven't worked before because we have channel your anger. So you could well see some excesses and some power issues that are coming out as a result of this. And you may decide, I am going to, instead of just being angry about it, I'm going to take the message out because I can see, I can use this. I can I can create myself enough in this to be able to then bring the message out so that I deal with what is darker in this but but there's a real sense of optimism or it's all for some of you you may feel very frustrated around a career or around some sort of personal brand or around being seen and understood for who you are and you you've been angry about it but it's it's there's something in what is coming in this world and the magic that's rising in you to take that anger and turn it into a message that is ultimately very very positive with the star so let's get a little bit more information from tara so we're first going to ask a little bit more about how this aspect which is you really making the choice to show who you are i think how that magic is rising in you as a result of this new world that's coming in so nine of swords reversed yeah there's something you've come from knight of cups reversed judgment oh yeah you know you've got a calling oh, the blank card same either way eight of cups reversed okay so judgment you know you have a calling this is who you are i will i'm making the choice this is about me you know and it, it's this is a power that you're meant to have this is a good thing it's not being selfish it's it's starting to come into who you are and what your calling is and and listening to that and understanding that i do think it's coming off the back of having been frustrated you could have been frustrated in love with knight of cups reversed or frustrated in doing something that really mattered to you and nine of swords there were probably mind games there were sort of impediments put in there there was there, but you are able to release like there is a releasing energy from that which is you understanding your calling so there's something in the magic of this new world that that you will shine much brighter in this world you are going to be able to do something that without this you couldn't do and you don't fully know what that is yet that's the magic the magic is you coming to understand that because with the the blank card something is coming out of the liminal space out of the unmanifest that it will have a major impact on this and will make it very clear to you what the choice is and who you are and it will break away all the patterns so that you can channel the anger break away all the patterns that were, were disappointing or that made you feel stuck so this is the first power that you are getting the first magic you're getting is profoundly liberating and really brings you to understand who you are and it's like it was necessary i feel like that 
the changes in the world were necessary. That's why the, it couldn't come out of the manifest until the unmanifest until some of these other things were going on. And so, but it was also, I think, meant to kind of stoke the fire, really, to make you determined, have the anger work for you. So then taking that anger and channeling it into a message, what, what are we looking at there in terms of the power of what you bring forward? Eight of Pentacles reversed, Page of Pentacles reversed, Death reversed, Five of Swords, Justice reversed. Okay, this is very much about righting a wrong. So, I mean, for some of you, as I say, it could be that, that you sort of like, you kind of almost observe this world coming in for a while and then you realize something is wrong in the way that's been dealt with. And that's where you know you have to step up and make a choice and you'll bring, the anger brings in a way to right a wrong. To not take on the battles that are not worth taking, but to understand the ones that are and to think about where injustice came in, that is possible. But I do think for some of you, you've been blocked. So this is just showing that it's sort of like, which battle is worth having, you know, like, and, and how to channel that anger rather than just be in battle around it all the time. You you need, you haven't been making the choice. It's interesting. Judgment is is the choice and the call. Death reversed is like not taking the call. So this is understanding to what degree this battle that you've been in has stopped you from following your pathway. So this is how you start to channel the anger and go, what what do I want to say as a result of this? And you, you've got a very different skill set that you bring forward that maybe hasn't been understood before because it didn't fit with the old order. So I, mean, I think for most of you, there is something about a skill set, an ability, uh, all of those sorts of things and the messages that you can bring through and who you could be in this world that you, you are much more suited to this world than potentially the world you've been living in. And this is going to, you're going to rise as a result of that because the old things that mattered are falling away. You couldn't have done this until this started to come through. But what, what this is saying is instead of like, like letting the anger overtake you, using this willpower and bringing a message about what the new world is and how you fit in, like to your skills are the ones that people need to look at. There's something like that going on for you, which is why you can be optimistic. Now, with all of that, of course, you've obviously been frustrated, I would say, or as I say, you could be, as the world comes in, you might be frustrated by some of it and you need to work out a way to get people to, to go more towards the light if you feel like there's despotism and other things occurring as a result of the, the new, new order that's coming through. But in either case, the external world does impact. So let's see how the external world is impacting on you channeling these new powers. Ace of Wands, King of Wands, Queen of Cups, King of Cups. Wow, I don't think, I think, I think you're meant to be saying, I think you're meant to be a bit of a star. I think that's the other thing around the star there. I, I, I think the external world's really going to see you. They're going to be excited by what you're bringing. I can see you as very charismatic and you will be around charismatic. I do think many of you, there's something creative, dramatic around all of this. That's how you're bringing the message. I think it's also going to bring a significant relationship. If you have been frustrated in love, and it looks like you might have been, this is to bring in the right relationship with the King and Queen of Cups together there. And if this isn't like literally people in a relationship, then this is, this is a much better emotional response to you and a sort of much better response to, to how you're presenting yourself. Like, I don't think you're going to find much pushback from the world at all. I think this new world we're working into, you are, you are very well suited to this and you're going to be a star in this world. Uh, and I think it's going to surprise you because I think the very things that kind of stopped you from achieving what you wanted to do before, there is something about this world and your capacity to be seen and bring your message out and to make the right choices for you that are going to to, to shift, you won't even have to ultimately control the anger. You'll, it'll be more that you'll find your people. That's what it looks like. So let's see a wild card around each of these for you. So around you, you know, coming into who you really are, making the choices around who you really are. Woman on fire. <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether you're a man or a woman. There's a man on fire and a woman on fire. So... <clears throat> This very much feels like sort of someone coming into their queen of wands doom, so to speak, that, that sort of sense of like, yes, you, this is your time. 
You're likely to be very attractive to other people. This is certainly showing up there. Very charismatic. It's your time. It's your time. There's something about how this is coming in and what's rising in you with it. It's that it, it, is, it is your time and you've had to wait for it because something's coming. It's really passionate and really, really on fire. And then, like, how you then take the sort of frustrations you've built but channel this into sort of messages that take you forward. A wild card around that. Rhythm. Go with the flow. Synchronicity. Adaptability. Like, yeah, getting, you'll be more, you're more in sync. Like, there's something about this new world. You're more in sync with this new world than you possibly were with the world before it. And again, like if there's things like drama or music or something like that, really, really powerful. That could be, you know, you could be someone who uses music to bring the message out. Let's have a look at your soul sort of response to this. So firstly, towards being this, this woman or man on fire. The immersed healing, humility, realignment, recovery. Yeah, this is going to make you feel a lot better about things. Something, you've been frustrated in love, in life, and maybe in all of those things. It's it, Your time hadn't come yet. Your time is coming, Pile 3. And you're going to find this sort of a, that sort of sense of who you are is incredibly immersive and healing for you. And you're not going to be sort of up yourself, you know, like with the humility. It's, this is not about ego. This is about authenticity. And then moving to the message that you bring. We get the flowering, abundance, excellence, harvest, bloom. How lovely is that? This is really positive. No wonder, you know, you are. You're going to be a star in some way. Let's have a look at what signs might show when these powers and, and energies are rising. So firstly, around the Leo, I will choice energy. Loved ones in spirit. So, you know, you may have mediumship abilities. You might connect on that sort of level. Um, yeah, there could be something about coming into almost an ancestral sort of power, <coughs> knowing who you are. And then messages from them and so forth. And then in terms of when you've got the message out there, you're getting your, you're flowering with the message rather than feeling sort of constrained by the anger. Travel. Getting out there, moving, you might sort of see things about travel, you might think about traveling, you might see this as an opportunity to travel with, with your message in some way. So those sort of things are a sign that that ability is rising as well. Okay, so what I did say in the beginning is that we're going to have a couple of yes, no questions. So I'm using a deck that has yes, no, and, and why it's yes, no in each case or a little bit of the energy around it. So this is in relation to the two types of magic that are arising in you. So this first type, which is you really coming into who you are, and this is the, the message that the, you then take out. So think about a question for each. And like, it could be anything. It could be, you know, do I need to study something for this? Or, you know, is this person a good connection to make? Or you could have met someone recently that makes you really feel passionate. Yeah, are they someone who you're meant to connect with? Is this, is this the beginning of it? Like whatever it might be, if you don't have a question yet, pause the video and think about it. Think about that power rising within you and something that you would like to ask about it and then press unpause when you're ready. So I'm now just asking for part three, what is the yes, no answer to the first question for them? Answer is no, it's just forked up a real time in the behind. So there could be something, this is probably picking up whatever this energy is that's been a, been a difficulty. So if you were asking about like one particular way to do this, probably the answer is no. If it's around a person, do you think this is the right person? Probably not. They're, not, they're going to be more of the old world and not of the new world. If no is an answer that you wanted, then that's great. It, it, it sort of confirms, it confirms your feeling about something. Let's ask the second question. So pause again if you need to. So the second question for pile three is, no, again, don't risk it all on this. It's a losing proposition. Okay, so there's something. I think this is because we have the, the blank card. I think that you're going to have to be a little bit patient around whatever some of these things are because something's coming up that will make it very, very clear for you. Very, very clear. But what you do need to know is it, these are both, sort of, I think, saying things that are around right now are part of the past. The future is coming through, and the future is is very, very bright. So, so this might be just a process of elimination for you. 
Okay, so to finish off, I'm going to also ask for a different deck about magic, about a magic power that you've always had that either can help you particularly with this or is a foundation or is just another thing in your kit bag that will help you move into this stardom pile three. So for you, we get Ascension. Yeah, you're meant to you see this is interesting too because the star made me think of the three piles this was the pile where there was the optimism and bringing people towards something that it's a higher order so you're definitely meant to do that there's something in your messaging and it may well be that that you've had to be frustrated so that you could understand that so your messaging was strong enough to help others rise above what is dull towards what is more like the light more like who they truly are so you're kind of connected to that pathway and as i say it may well be that that's why life's been frustrating because you've been waiting for the time of the calling but this is definitely saying this new world that's coming in is part of that for you and you will be able to ascend with this but i think you'll help others so i hope that that resonates for you i hope it uh connects to to what you want in the world and in this new world and that you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear otherwise i hope to see you in future readings